Hello everybody and welcome back to my studio. I hope that you like cake because today we're going to talk about the new color slice feature in DaVinci Resolve 19. For those who don't know me, my name is Douglas. I'm a professional colorist based in Paris and I work on projects ranging from commercials, music videos and longer form. So if you've recently played with DaVinci Resolve 19, you might have heard of some really nice, cool new tools. And one of them is called the Color Slice. Probably because the guy who created it loves cake or pastry. I don't know. But the Color Slice, the way it works is that it allows you to manipulate some slices of your hue range. And each slice allows you to control the hue, saturation and density of your red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and skin vectors. And it's pretty cool. Let's dive in. All right, guys, so let's have a look at this new color slice tool. And to access it, you're gonna go right between your curves and your color warper. So you click right there in the middle. And we've got this brand new UI that populates on our screen. And I think it's good to mention that we've got some really broad controls that affect all the hues, but we've also got some really narrow selections. For example, we have access to our red hues, our skin, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta. So these are going to be more targeted adjustments. And first off, let's talk about our global controls and to begin with, we're going to look at our saturation control. And you see that if I pull my saturation all the way to the left, it's desaturating fully my image. And you see that we've got a saturation depth control. And the reason why I've got this weird cube representation here is to help you visualize what this slider is actually doing. So let's start by pulling it all the way to the right. And I'm going to turn off my node and see here, this is my black point. Here, it's my white point. And here are my darkest and least saturated portions of my image. And here are my brightest and most saturated portions of my image. And basically what you see here and here are my two lightsabers right here on screen. So the red and the green one. You see that if I drag my slider all the way to the right and stay close to one, you see that those two lines, my two lightsabers are getting closer to white and desaturation basically. So with the saturation depth control all the way to the right, we are mostly affecting the peak and brightest saturations of our image. You see, our lightsabers, they're becoming white on screen, pretty close to white. And now if I drag this slider all the way down, you see that this shape has changed. It's now narrow at the bottom and fat at the top. And this is because it is targeting mostly our darkest and least saturated portions of the image. So in our case, our dark blues here, and it's leaving our lightsabers alone. And the reason why I have picked this image and not another one is because we have really bright saturated colors with these lightsabers, but also some darker colors and saturations as well. So this is a really good example to demonstrate what this tool is actually doing because it's quite mild it's not going to completely desaturate only the darkest portions and leave the top portions really bright and saturated it has a more of a feathering effect so this actually helps showing what it does to you and the same thing goes with my density control so if i increase my density it's going to darken my colors and my density depth slider, if I pull it all the way to the right, it's going to mostly affect my brightest and most saturated colors, so making them darker. And the opposite is right. 
If I go all the way to the left, it's going to mostly densify my least saturated colors and my darkest colors, basically. We've also got a hue slider, which is rotating all the hues of your image. And of course, we've got all these cake slices for red skin, cyan, magenta, yellow, whatever. So that allows us to have more control on each and every hue slice. So if we want to, for example, change the hue of our greens, and I'm going really extreme here, as before, as after, we can do so. If you press your highlight mode on your panel, or uh, you can press actually here, it's going to show you the selection and what is actually affected by this adjustment. And you see that it's artifacting a little bit. So you gotta be mindful of what you're doing. So there is this hue control, there is this density control, which is going to densify your slice. So in that case, I'm densifying my greens. They're becoming darker. You can make them becoming brighter. So before, after, if you pull back on the density, and you can also increase or decrease the saturation with that slider, basically. One other thing there is to know is this center control. So let's actually go back and make those greens really purple. And now if I press my highlight mode and I act on that center slider, you see that it's distributing the weight differently for that control. So that is definitely something that you can play with as well. And last but not least, this saturation control acts a little bit more in a pleasing and filmy way compared to, for example, the standard video sat control. So, for example, if I go back and increase my saturation, you see before, after, my colors are becoming darker. Of course, it's uh, going a bit crazy here, but it's going a bit darker. And if I go and use my regular sat control, they're becoming brighter and quite nuclear. And to give you my personal take on that, I think Blackmagic did a fantastic job with that new color slice tool, because in the past, we were relying on some complexity in our node trees in order to achieve similar results. So this is going to be great and kind of really broaden our perspective when it comes to what we can achieve in the grade without DCTLs and third-party plugins, for example. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed watching this episode. Please leave a like, comment down below, let me know what topics you would like me to cover, subscribe to the channel to not miss them, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.